You know, for many of us, it is that um, burning desire, that passion within that keeps us going. It is that voice that never lets you go to sleep, waking you up in the middle of the night to remind you that our brothers and sisters back home are not free. It is that voice that keeps pushing you, that instinct within that makes you get into heated debates, that makes you pick up that phone, call the radio stations, write on Facebook pages, fighting tyranny. It's a passion that we cannot let die within, with us. We must pass it on and we must not let the critics that are out there accusing us to be just power hungry mongers that are waiting to be another Jame in the Gambia. Nothing could be the furthest, furthest from the truth than those people accusing us both on social media and behind the scenes that we're just power hungry. That many of us, Ilaftaman Sayalla, then Bugangu. No, that's not why we're in this. We're in this because what is happening in our country, the Gambia, is wrong. The tortures, the killings for the last 20 years, is wrong. We're in this to tell the world and to tell Yahya Jame that what is happening is wrong. When Yahya Jame started abusing on our people, at first it was just any ordinary Gambian. Then he went on tribal lines. Then religious and now sexual orientation. Recently he's on a campaign to arrest gay people in the Gambia. Ladies and gentlemen, I challenge any one of you to tell me what different or what right does a straight Gambian have that a gay Gambian doesn't have? What can a straight Gambian do that a gay Gambian cannot do? Who gave Yai Jame the right to say that gay Gambians cannot live peacefully in that country? We as black Africans, some of the most discriminated people on the face of this earth, who are we to turn around and discriminate on our fellow citizens? Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening in the Gambia is wrong. It is time we all continue to fight, expose Yai Jame, and the critics that are accus accusing some of the members in the struggle as power hungry mongers need to stop because they're, they're, they're dragging a lot of people away. It needs to stop. And I know this Amadou Samba situation is still a very heated debate within our community and some online newspapers accusing people. Let me tell you what happened to Amadou Samba. When he was grabbed by that security agent, those four agents and being taken away, the fear in him it is the same fear that our brothers and sisters go through when the NIA and the military comes to arrest them for no apparent reason. The cry for help that he was doing is what our brothers and sisters go through daily. The fear is what they go through daily. The fear that Amr went through that day is what our brothers and sisters go through when the NIA arrests them in the middle of the night or separates them from their family, not knowing if they will ever come back. So Amadou had a taste of what tyranny is. Amadou had a taste of what his friend does to the Gambian people. As a successful individual and a parent, it, Amadou has a responsibility, just like any of us, to speak the truth. Many of us are Muslims. It is only right that a Muslim is supposed to say the truth. So this is why I don't have any sympathy for him. He has a moral responsibility to protect and speak against tyranny, and he's not doing it. And he had a taste of what our people go through. Back to this gay issue. I'm going to share a story with you. Like many of you, a young Gambian immigrant to the United States, I didn't have much information about what being gay is. But I happened to work with a gay gentleman by the name of Sam Garcia. As I began to rise through the ranks of employment, I did face some challenges. Some of which were personal attacks to discourage me from moving up.
somewhere lack of just basic understanding of the job. But Sam saw what was happening to me was wrong. He not only motivated me to keep doing what I'm doing and to keep learning, he brought me under his wings and showed me how to do the job properly. Sam was my angel that protected me. Back then in Seattle, gay bashing was very, very, very big. One day I came to work and I was very sad to see Sam with a swollen face. He was beaten by some gay bashers. But like the angel he was, God was protecting Sam and looking over him. Because when the cops came to the scene, when he called the cops, they found a wallet which led them to the attackers that were brought to justice. See, that is God's way of telling us that we cannot discriminate or just because somebody is gay doesn't mean that God is not looking out for him. Sam opened my eyes that being gay has nothing to do with being a decent individual. Yeah, Jame is a tyrant who is bent on doing one thing and that is to distract the Gambian community, oppress us, and ensure that he stays in power for the longest. And this is why we must not let that passion that we have today as young men die with us. This is why we must continue to fight for what's wrong. Because when he started, he just killed our people because he wanted to stay in power. Then he fought us on tribal lines. Then he came through religious lines. And now it is through sexual orientation. Where will the madness stop? Why and who gave Yaya the right as an individual to oppress 1.8 million people? And then the people that keep attacking some of us in the struggle that we're only power hungry. We're going to be worse than Yaya Jame. Nothing is furthest from the truth than that. And it is time that those people understand that what they're saying on social media and behind the scenes is wrong, that they do need to leave people alone. Ladies and gentlemen, we're all young today. Some of us are very fortunate to be in the United States. I'm sitting in the middle of Los Angeles today. 24 hour electricity, running water, very good life. But my people back home are not enjoying the same quality of life that I am. Why? Let's ask ourselves why. Why are we all running away from home? Because a few people are there abusing us. Why would we run away from tyranny and poverty just to come and sit here and be comfortable? Ask yourself that question for a minute. We are in a better position than most of our brothers and sisters. And that is why we must stand up for them. That is why we must fight for them. It is a moral responsibility. This is our future that we're talking about. We must stop attacking each other. I am not in this struggle to get rich. I spend a lot of time in this struggle. I spend a lot of time on this radios. I spend a lot of time on social media. I could have used that time to get a second job. If I wanted to be rich, I would dance to the tune of Yaya Jame, just like Amadou Samba is doing, and that's why he's so wealthy. But some of us have dignity, and because we are fortunate, we will continue to fight. And I encourage any one of you, especially some of you that have the passion in you, to not give up. When Nelson Mandela was fighting, he didn't think that freedom would come as easy as it came for him. People that were fighting for Nelson Mandela in South Africa had no clue what a South African was or who a South African is. But because of his passion for freedom, his desire to see a free South Africa, today we have a free South Africa and he became the first president of South Africa. Some people did attack Nelson Mandela, but he never gave up. There's a lot of other people None of us are Nelson Mandela's, we're all Gambians that will continue to fight. I am asking each and every one of you, if you truly believe that what is happening in the Gambia 
you must rise up and speak up. Forget the desire to go back home. Forget the fear. Collectively, we are stronger than Yai Jame. Collectively, we can get Yai Jame out and get our country back. But we must not let those people that attack us, that we're only power hungry, and that we will never succeed, get into our minds. Because we will never back down. We're going to fight. And this message is for all of you guys. Anyone who doubts themselves that this is possible to get Yai Jame out, I challenge you to keep fighting. It's not going to be easy. We might not see freedom, but our sons and daughters, our grandsons and granddaughters will enjoy freedom. And that is worth fighting for. Thank you so much.